Hey everyone, Thornton Smash here. Welcome to Season 9 of Apex Legends, and today we're going to be going over the best controller settings, in particular the ALC Advanced Look settings for your controllers, whether you be on the Xbox system, the PlayStation system, or the Nintendo Switch system. Wait, where's my Joy-Cons? We're going to go over ALC settings, otherwise known as advanced look controls, and this is going to be for season nine. This should give you the best advantage to go ahead and win as many games as possible. By fine tuning and tweaking these, you can absolutely elevate your level of play over the next competitor you have to face. But first, let's go into actually how to even get that menu open. Now, just like any other game, you're going to simply want to go to your settings and you're going to scroll down. Now, you'll notice that there isn't actually an ALC setting anymore. It's really weird. You actually have to hit down on the D pad just like that and then and in the right corner you'll see advanced look controls and you simply go ahead and click on this now these settings will be for everything from the ps4 ps5 xbox xbox one s xbox series x and the nintendo switch unfortunately you will do different settings for pc now if you are on the nintendo switch version of the game you won't be able to unlock this unless you have a pro controller now luckily right here is a pro controller that I actually use on the Nintendo Switch and right now it's only about $9.99 so I highly recommend this to anyone on that Switch platform looking to get a pro controller so they can unlock these settings. You'll go ahead and find the link in the description below and in the comments so that you can go ahead and find this. If you have no plans to go ahead and buy a pro controller and you are happy with the Joy-Cons, you'll see a link in the top right now that you can go ahead and click on and that will be for all your other basic settings that aren't as advanced as these ones. But now we're going to go ahead and go back into to how to actually adjust these because it is very important to know some key information. And that key information is that you will need to do your own adjustments on ALC settings. You cannot copy these image for image. I will tell you when, where, and what each setting does and what works for me best. And also I will let you know where you need to make adjustments based off of your play style. That's the only way these will work. It does not work just to copy someone else's. That's like saying, oh, this guy plays at 10 sensitivity, so I will copy that. That isn't going to help you. You're going to get really lost and you're going to have a hard time playing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and have all my settings here listed at zero. And we're going to start from the top and work our way down and go over what they do and what I find to be the best settings. And this is once again for all the PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch Pro Controller players out there. Let's begin. Okay, so the first one up is going to be dead zone and this is how far you tilt the stick before it begins to register input you want to keep this as low as possible without your stick drifting i personally find that by having it just simply at five percent or with two ticks to the right is perfect for my controller so adjust this based off of how your controller functions then we have the outer threshold raising this number decreases how far you have to tilt the stick before you reach the maximum tilt now some people like to keep this at zero for a full range of motion however i like to have it three ticks to the right once again at four percent as i find it just gives me a little bit more balance then moving into response curve that will alter the sensitivity of the input along the tilt for example if you move this to 100 percent it would give you extremely low sensitivity at about 10 degrees of tilt and extremely high at around 45 degrees of tilt i like to keep this at around 14 ticks to the right or as you can simply see 14 but you can go ahead and edit that as you like as well then of course we have the per optic settings now what this does is for each optic you put on say a one times two times three times four times and so on and so forth you can adjust the sensitivity individually here as you would like now the, as you can see here there are about 10 ticks here and that is a full 10 sensitivity but you can go in between if you would like as well basically the way i recommend this is at two and one and sometimes even three having a high sensitivity helps as you want to be able to swivel left and right very quickly up close and the farther range optics i like to have at a lower sensitivity so i can line up my shot but you're going to want to go ahead and adjust those based off of how you want the game to feel when you're shooting so now we're going to go into yaw speed and yaw speed can be a little confusing what that is is your left to right look hip fire sensitivity and there are 50 ticks you can move to the right which would be max sensitivity now there is a specific way that i like to calculate what my personal yaw speed should be and hopefully this helps you at 160 or 16 ticks to the right your yaw speed is at the default setting of three for apex Legends, so you can go ahead and adjust this as high as you want personally i find at around 350 is the perfect yaw speed for me but what it ties into with the pitch speed which is your up and down look and your hip fire sensitivity you only want that to be four ticks behind 
your yaw speed. It's very critical that you have them within four of each other. So if you have it on 16 for yaw speed, you want your pitch speed to be 12. If you have your yaw speed at 350, you should be at 310. You always want them within four of each other. Now we have the turning extra yaw, which is the left right sensitivity boost when your stick is tilted to its maximum. I recommend having this at around 170. I find that it doesn't go ahead and turn that quickly that I cannot see what's going on in my vision and it doesn't get all blurry. The turning extra pitch is the up down sensitivity boost when your stick is tilted to its maximum. I recommend always keeping this just like before four ticks below what you have the yaw. If you need to go ahead and tweak those settings so that you feel more comfortable while you play, that's totally fine. But once again, I just really, really want to emphasize you need to keep both of these settings for the pitch to be within four of the yaw. Now the turning ramp up time is known as your aim acceleration. This is how quickly extra sensitivity is applied to your aim. You can go ahead and put this at zero to turn it off. I personally like having it at one tick as you can see here. Then we simply have our turning ramp up delay, which is your aim acceleration. This is how long you have to wait before adding extra sensitivity to your aim. I like to have this off. I keep this at zero. Then we have your ADS yaw speed, and that's your aiming down sight, and that's gonna be your left to right sensitivity. I keep this as low as possible while still being able to compensate for that recoil. It'll allow you for more precise aiming and consistency. I like to have this at around a six. And then you also have your pitch speed, which you're gonna wanna go ahead and have as your up and down aiming downside sensitivity, same as above. So go ahead and also put that at a six. Once again, though, I wanna be very clear when talking about yaw and pitch speed, these are going to be things that you're going to want to adjust manually from this baseline that I've given you. You have your ADS turning extra yaw, which is your left to right sensitivity boost when your stick is tilted to its maximum. I would also once again say I would put this at 12 so you can quickly turn if you need to aim and will also help when using long range scopes. Then we have turning extra pitch for aiming down sight and that's your up and down sensitivity boost when your stick is tilted at its maximum. Same as above, I recommend having this at around 12 or 120. Then we have the ADS turning ramp up time for aiming down the sight. That's your aim acceleration again. Same as the turning ramp up time we went over earlier, keep that at zero and the ADS turning ramp up delay, aim acceleration, also again, same as the ramp up delay, you're gonna keep that at zero. Then of course, the last two options you'll have are target compensation, which is your aim assist. If you don't like aim assist on console and you find it annoying, you can turn it off right there, but it isn't recommended and it may cause issues. The melee target compensation is the same aim assist, but for meleeing, you can also choose to put that off, but I wouldn't recommend it. So that's gonna be my video today, guys. These are the settings that I have used to help me reach Apex Predator about three times going for a fourth time this season. However, like I said, you're gonna wanna tweak them a little bit to your liking, make sure they work with your controller, and your console. Hopefully the information I gave you on what each setting actually does helps you find exactly what you're looking for. However, if you are looking for another informational guide on ALC settings from another Apex Predator who's absolutely phenomenal and great with his guys as well, I can't recommend anyone higher than Sweatbands who has also done a season nine ALC settings that he uses. So if you don't want just my opinion, on it and you want another one go ahead and check out his video and until next time legends keep slaying the outlands i'll see you out there